We're going to be talking about tissues starting today, um, but before I start that lecture, I wanted to bring you back here to the lecture canvas page to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, one thing is um, that you can always get help with Connect by using this red phone number and that the best way to access what needs to be do, done in any particular uh, run up to an exam uh, from the lecture site can be found here in course modules and the modules are assigned by exams. So if you go here, you can see that we're now on exam number two and it shows you all of the videos that you should be watching in order to prepare for exam number two. But the other thing I wanted to show you is that there are some other resources that you haven't needed yet for lab that will become useful to you now that we are starting to learn anatomy. Starting in week four, you'll be learning anatomy. So a couple of things. One thing is uh, there's a, an anatomy model website that um, a, a retired professor has put together and it looks like this. It is not particularly useful for bones. There's a reason for that, I won't go into it. But once you're done with bones and you're doing, for example, muscles, then on this particular website, there are pictures of all of the models that we use in lab. And can we, yeah, there we go. Um, and you can identify the different names of the different muscles. Uh, it's a really good website. There are clickable links. You can use it to study, but keep in mind that this was actually created so that the more advanced anatomy classes could use them. How do you know if you need to use the coracle, you need to learn the coracobrachialis muscle? Ha! Huh. You look at the list that's on the first page of that week's lab. If it's one of the list of terms that's on that first page or two of each lab, if it's there, you need to learn it. If it's not there, you don't need to learn it. That's how you'll know. What else is good to know? <clears throat> I have got lab Quizlets set up for all of these labs. Um, so if you like using Quizlet, um, then you can go and jump in and use those to help you study. Uh, the, uh, the Quizlets work very well on a smartphone. Um, and then I've got um, anatomy review videos. Let me show you what those look like. Okay, so here's one of my anatomy review videos. <clears throat> and you can see there's a bone there and you can't hear me, but I'm droning on in the background about how you would recognize that that bone is not the same as that bone, is not the same as that bone, et cetera, okay? Uh, you can watch these with the uh, sound off or the sound on. Oh, let's see how the closed captioning is in it. Okay, here we've got closed captioning. Ah, they spelled humorous properly. Yeah, you can see even the closed captioning works. Pretty good. I got I to gotta review all of those one more time. All right, so those are available for you so that you can study um, for lab using uh, a richer online environment, all right? So no excuse for not studying while you're standing in line because you could watch my YouTube videos or you can use the lab quizlets, um, either way. But let's start talking about, oh, sorry, there's one more thing you can do on your smartphone. You can use speed anatomy. Uh, if you just look up apps that you can add onto your phone, Speed Anatomy is one of the anatomy apps. I bet there are a lot of anatomy apps. The free version of Speed Anatomy is actually very appropriate for um, AP120. So you can use that also while you're standing in line somewhere. Okay. But we are talking about tissues. Uh, tissues are groups of cells that have similar properties and work together for a similar purpose. You know, when we're talking about tissues, we're kind of talking about the different building materials that can be used to create the structure that is the human body. Just like if you're gonna build a house, you may want bricks, you may want cinder blocks, 
You may want drywall, you may want glass for windows, you might want stucco, okay? Just like you need all of those tissues in order to build a house, tissues, building materials in order to build a house, the different tissues allow us to build the human body. And one of the things that I think is helpful as you're learning the tissues is to think about not just the details of what they are, but why that is useful. For example, um, if you're gonna make a door um, into the bathroom, you usually don't build it out of glass. Why? Because, because it's see-through and people want privacy in there, right? So you put a solid door. If you had a door between your house and some sort of a, um, um, some sort of a sound studio, where you were making videos, you might want to make that soundproof, right? So you would make it out of a different material. These are those different materials. You should know that there are four major tissue types, four major tissue types. We're going to spend these next lectures mostly talking about epithelial tissue and connective tissue. Epithelial tissue and connective tissue. Mostly, because we're going to have a whole set of lectures about muscle tissue and a whole set of lectures about nervous tissue as we're discussing their physiology. But there are four major tissues, epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues mostly are tissues that are in sheets. You know, just like you might put a sheet or a blanket on the bed, if you wanted a sheet of of cells that were close to each other that you couldn't poke your finger through, you would want an epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissues cover body surfaces. They're the lining of hollow organs <clears throat> and body cavities. They also form glands, and we'll talk about it. Right. Connective tissue, in general, they do protect and support the body and the organs of the body's um, body, but um, they actually do a little bit more than that. Uh, so uh, we're gonna talk about those. Then there's muscular tissue. Muscular tissue as a category um, are tissues that are made up of cells that can shorten and generate force by shortening. Any cell that can shorten and generate force is a muscle cell and part of a muscle tissue. And then we've got nervous tissue. And nervous tissue, along with muscle tissue, these are what are called excitable cells or excitable tissues. And nervous tissue uh, uh, creates an electric signal that can convey information. Then we'll talk about those. Let's start with epithelial tissue. I don't think they're supposed to be in this order. Okay. So epithelial tissues are sheets of tissues. So imagine, if you will, that epithelial tissues can be sort of like shrink wrap or those kind of wrappings, but for all of your organs. So on the, if I were to open up your abdomen, which wouldn't be very pleasant for you, but boop, pop you open, eep, pull out some of your intestines, what my fingers are touching, the outside of the intestines, the outside of the stomach, that is all coated with a sheet of cells that is an epithelial tissue, right? If you swallow something and it goes down your esophagus and plops down here into your stomach, then whatever it was that you swallow is touching the inside of your stomach and it's also touching an epithelial tissue, right? So epithelial tissues are kind of like shrink wraps they're on the outside of things, they line the inside of surfaces, they line the inside of your mouth, uh, the inside of your eyes, right? All of those are epithelial tissues. Now, in general, epith not in generals, always epithelial tissues have got cells who have one free surface and the other is attached to something called a basement membrane. What that means is that the, the cells that are, are, for example, coating the outside of the stomach and the intestines, uh, those cells have got one 
uh, orientation, let's, let's call it their head, where it's not attached to anything, right? And that is their free surface. But the feet of those cells is always going to be attached to this stuff called basement membrane. Don't think too hard about basement membrane. It is a high protein, thick goo that they've got their feet all attached to. And they are attached to each other as tight as they can. So imagine, imagine those you know, videos you've seen about like maybe subway cars in Japan at rush hour before coronavirus, right? Where everyone was just crowded together. That's how crowded together the cells and epithelial tissues are, right? So they cover the organs and the body, they line body cavities, they line the hollow organs, and they don't have blood vessels going through them. And that is why epithelial tissues can never be particularly thick because the cells in them wouldn't get blood supply. The only thick epithelial tissues we do have is like our skin, that's an epithelial, the outer part of the skin is an epithelial tissue, but the reason it can be relatively thick is because most of it is dead, okay? Now, the cells of epithelial tissues, they divide very frequently. Remember, we've just been talking about molecular biology, and I told you that any mistakes that get made during cell division, which is during cell replication, cell division, um, that any mistakes that happen could cause a mutation and mutations would cause the cells to die or become cancerous, okay? Epithelial tissues are the tissues where there's the most cell division. So it's the place where we are most likely to find a cell mutation and they are the tissues that are most likely to turn into cancer. So uh, breast cancer, cancer of the epithelial tissue usually, mm colon cancer, uh, cancer of an epithelial tissue. And it's because the cells divide so frequently that even though mistakes are infrequent, they do happen and they can cause um, cancer. Now, all of these epithelial tissues, they are classified according to the shape of the cells that make up the tissue and the number and arrangement of the cell layers. Let's look at that, okay? Cell shapes are on the bottom, cell layers on the top of this image. Let's start off with cell shape. Remember that all of these cells, they have got one area that's free, free, okay? So I was calling this like their heads, right? And that would be, if, if Tidal is grabbing the intestine out of the abdomen, then that's where my finger would be touching, right? Or if you just swallowed something and this is the inside of your stomach, that's where whatever you swallowed would be touching. That's the free or apical surface. And then the other end is attached to basement membrane, basement membrane. And look at how tightly packed they are together. Characteristic of epithelial tissues because we use them as wrapping. You know, sometimes it's like a really thin shrink wrap. Uh, sometimes it's like that really thick, annoying plastic that keeps you from being able to get something out of a product that you just bought, right? But there are always uh, sheets of tissues, okay? So there are three shapes of cells. Squamous are flat. Columnar are tall and thin and cuboidal. Do they look like cubes? Not exactly. Um, I'll show you some and then it'll be more clear. And then we categorize them by an arrangement of layers. Simple epithelial tissues, one layer of cells, one. Those cells all have their feet on, a, on basement membrane and a free surface, okay? Stratified. The lowest levels got its feet on basement membrane, and the top levels got the free surface. And then pseudostratified. These guys all have their feet on basement membrane, but only some of them have got their heads free. All right, starting with the next video, we'll go over these in detail, and I'll try to explain to you why life invented so many combinations of epithelial tissues.